The events in Parliament on Wednesday night were, to say the least, truly shocking. The use of language on both sides was frightening, but in particular Boris Johnson's language marked a new low in the Commons. His dismissal of wholly legitimate concerns about the safety of women MPs with the word humbug was outrageous. And to say that the best way of honouring the murdered MP Joe Cox is to deliver Brexit was insulting to her memory. The question is, was this just the Prime Minister out of his depths after a terrible week in which he was humiliated by the Supreme Court? Or was it a calculated act of naked populism? An attempt to turn the people against Parliament, against their elected representatives, against our democratic system? I suspect it's the latter. Let's just remember a few things. I'm, I'm surprised you find it truly shocking and frightening. I mean, there's been some pretty robust behaviour down the years in there. Michael Hasseltine grabbing hold of the mace, the way Thatcher and other... Give me a minute, the way Thatcher and Kinnock used to go at each other as well. And on the Prime Minister's defence, he didn't bring Joe Cox into the conversation. The Labour Party chose to bring Joe Cox into the conversation, to which the Prime Minister responded. But so, just to challenge you on those points, overall, to me... That shows why Boris Johnson was right to prorogue or suspend Parliament. Because what was achieved yesterday, and what is going to be achieved, that is all that is now going to happen. He was absolutely right to try and close down Parliament. And if they feel it so keenly, Greg, why did they have the long summer recess? Why didn't they get all this nonsense going on during the week after week after week that they all had off in the summer? So that's the reality of how I see it. Well, obviously, I disagree. Um, but I'm, and I respect I, the fact I'm, in, you I'm interested in, in, in particularly what happened last night. Um, I think, I mean, if you look at, at a series of, of, of decisions by uh, the Prime Minister, I suspect advised by Dominic Cummings, I mean, you've got, first of all, he's, they made a mistake on, they thought if they, called, if they called an election, Labour would support them, and they got it wrong. Secondly, uh, they kicked out. A lot of Tory MPs who in other, other occasions would support them and they got it wrong. And thirdly, uh, prorogue in Parliament, well, they've, they've got wrong. Now, is it all part of a pattern? Is it all for something, some other reason? Is this actually going to be, you go to the people on a populist anti-Parliament platform. Well, to support that, but it just occurs to me, of course, some people might not have seen some of the events, yeah. so here's just a little bit of the Prime Minister in action on Wednesday night. The Capitulation Act, or the Surrender Act, or whatever you want to call it, it does, it does, I'm sorry, but it, it greatly enfeebles, it greatly enfeebles this government's ability to negotiate. But what I will say is that the best way to honour the memory of Joe Cox, and indeed the best way to uh, bring this country together, would be, I think, to get Brexit done. And I, I absolutely do. And I think that it is the continuing inability of this Parliament to get Brexit done that is causing the anxiety and the ill feeling that is now rampant in our country. And it has to be said that there was language such as that on all sides, cowards, cheats, frauds, whatever else it might have been. I, I, Greg, I've seen it all before. It's not particularly, it's not particularly wholesome, but, you, but it doesn't surprise but, me. But, I mean, this Prime Minister is a rabble rouser. That's what he does. I mean, he does it well, but that's what he does. If you go back over history, you don't find many rabble rousers as Prime Minister. They yeah. don't. So, I mean, go back, to, what? go back to the 40s where Nye Bevan... Uh, was very rude about the Tories, yeah. his, his Prime Minister told him to tone it down. Yeah, uh, well, we can, have an, we can have a discussion about whether one person or another person is more rhetorical than another, but I, I think there's something deeper going, going on here, and that's to do with the language of politics and, the, and what politicians think are important. It, it's probably worth looking at what made people so, or why people were so angry. Let's have a look at Paula Sheriff, MP, because that's what really touched things off. We should not resort to using offensive, dangerous or inflammatory language for legislation that we do not like. And we stand here, Mr Speaker, under the shield of our departed friend, with many of us in this place subject to death threats and abuse every single day. And let me tell the Prime Minister that they often quote his words, surrender act, betrayal, traitor, and I for one am sick of it. We must moderate our language and it has to come from the Prime Minister first. I have to say, Mr Speaker, I've never heard such humbug in all my life. 
Yeah, and um, that was uh, in a way emphasised by, I have to bring in my uh, regular soul sister here, the <laughs> Labour MP, Jess, sis, Jess Phillips. We don't look alike, but honestly. <laughs> um, well, she tweeted uh, today that she'd had uh, an, non an anonymous letter uh, saying that if uh, Dun Downing Street might think we're all humbugs about his words, but they're literally being used in death threats against her, she said. Now, I can understand why people are f mm. saying what they're saying. I I'm a bit uneasy now about the way that everything, the, the escalation of language and so on, because this, and I want to be clear, I don't want to dismiss anything that anybody has said, but let's remember um, Stephen Timms, long before Brexit, long before all of this, yeah. Stephen Timms, 2010, was m almost murdered. I mean, it was a miracle he the survived. The Labour MP. By, uh, the Labour MP in the East End, uh, almost murdered by an Islamist extremist. And all of this language has been going on from, for a long time. You know, I, when I was 24, became president of the NUS, the morning after I got yeah. elected, I had the death threat. I had a cartoon with me hanging. When I was yeah. at CRE, we had a, a we, somebody fired an air gun through my window. I came in and found a hole the next morning. The, it, this is not just because of what's happening now. There is a coarsening of politics, which is long term. And I think we need to think about why that, what's driving that. I think that a lot of this language was initiated in the tabloid press and I remember we saw no we did because we had front page headlines crush the saboteurs we had the judiciary being and or the MPs remain MPs being enemies of the people words like collaborationist traitor betrayal my brother using words like surrender capitulation as if the people who are standing in the way of the blessed will of the people as defined by the 17.4 million votes in 2016 should be hung, drawn, quartered, tarred and feathered. And I think that is highly reprehensible language to use. And I hope that today in the Commons, we're recording this on Thursday, there will be some sort of deal on both sides, all sides, that this sort of thing is utterly dialed down. Well, it serves no purpose. I just want to say one thing about the Joe Cox remark. I also think it was particularly tasteless to, for those who are grieving a mother, an MP and a friend, to say that the best way to honour her memory is to deliver the thing that she and her family campaigned against, That's what which is Brexit. Said, I know he did, and I think I think it was a very tasteless way of referring to the memory of a murdered MP, murdered by somebody who said Britain first, who is obviously of the far right tendency, but, which you could argue well, is being whipped up by but, this sort of language. Surely your brother's just trying to say, f free the country of this this no, this no, Michelle Rigory. No, no Michelle, I don't think it was what what he said particularly. I think what he said was, please let's all come down, get this done, so yeah, we can move on. Together. But I'm afraid that was not the take. Tim Michelle, I you. think that we've we've gone so far that we're missing one simple premise now, which is the word professionalism. We seem to have forgotten that Parliament and politicians, this is a professional work environment. And when I watched um, Parliament last night, I had to turn it off. I was embarrassed and I, first of all, I turned the volume down because it was screeching. Yeah. name calling, yeah. you've gone through all of the courts, you've gone through all this stuff to, to get yourself reconvened and that is what mm. you do when you've got your, sure. your reconvention. We've lost sight of the fact that you're professionals and I'd like people to act like that and the language is, it is, it's not scary necessarily but it's deeply unnecessary, deeply unprofessional and I find it fascinating that people are upset by the use of the word surrender but excuse me if you need to bleep me out, well, they'll be upset at the word surrender but be deeply comfortable with the word f being used in a professional environment, f Brexit being used in a professional environment. And I just don't think that is acceptable. All the language needs to calm down, become professional and do the jobs that we're paying you to do in the manner but, of but, which you but, should. But who do you think is going to gain from what's happening? Well, I actually think that there'll be many Brexiteers who watch this and they're very much in support of Boris and what he's doing and how he's doing it. And I do believe that you're heading into the territory of an election which will be people against Parliament, whether you call that populism or whatever label you want to apply to that, I think that it is playing into those people. I think that they are um, uh, comforted 
by the actions that they see Boris taking at the moment. I, I, I agree with Michelle, but I, I, Greg, you've raised a really important point, and I'd like to drag it away from yesterday and today a bit, because I don't think this is just a thing of today. I mean, mm. what Michelle said, it, take me back to when I was president of the NUS. There's we a haven't thousand, got time for it, I'm afraid. <laughs> there's a thousand <laughs> like, and then, veterans are I just want to say very quickly, last year I wrote a pamphlet for a policy exchange, a think tank, called The Age of Incivility, and we went back over 20 years. This has been growing and growing. Yes. And the reason we think it's happening is because the politicians would rather spend time uh, denigrating each other's character than wrestling with the actual okay. issues mm. of substance. And right. that's what the heart of this is about. Right. Are well, you about telling the, uh, the, the op uh, people that your opponent is a bad guy? Are, are you actually trying to answer the question that the people have posed? Mm.